Um, I think my worry is that all the, all the indicators are going in the wrong direction. Both the IMF, the World Bank and the OECD have revised down their growth forecasts. When I look at the forecasts that we are working on for trade, they are also not looking promising. They are going in the wrong direction. You look at what lies behind some of them. You look at purchasing managers' indices, they've cooled. Uh, you look at ocean freight rates have dropped, and normally we would be very happy about that, thinking that perhaps this is supply chain issues working themselves out, but now it's not so clear. It could be dropping demand, which all are signaling that something uh, untoward, not so good is going. So let's say that the global economy is slowing considerably. I hate to put that R word, you know, and I used it yesterday. Let's say it's slowing and maybe we are inching towards the R and that worries me. What are you seeing in the way of trade flows, that indication? Well, it, for trade flows, we look at certain indices. And like I mentioned, you know, when you see purchasing managers, indices, Cooling, you see export orders cooling. Those are some indications uh, that, you know, tell us that things are not moving in the right direction. And you know that um, earlier on uh, in, in 2021, um, we had trade be part of trying to bring us out of the pandemic at a fairly robust uh, growth rate. And now we see things cooling. Uh, and I think our forecast will, will probably be lower than the, for 2023, certainly, um, than what we had forecast before. Central bankers have an incredibly difficult job today, given the slowdown that we're seeing and the incredible inflation pressures out there. Um, how would you rate the central bankers' reaction <laughs> to the current macro environment? Look, as you said, Juliana, central bankers are in a tough spot right now, and I wouldn't want to be them. Um, they have to they have to try to curb the inflationary pressures that they're seeing, but they have to be careful not to overshoot. They have to make sure they coordinate fiscal and monetary policy so that they're in sync and going in the same direction. So, so it's a tough, it's a very tough call. How, when do you know, um, you know, not to overshoot, especially if you're looking at lagging indicators. So it's a very difficult problem now and um, I don't want to pronounce any judgment. Mm. I just hope that, that the balance will be maintained. You can see both in emerging markets and developing countries, mm. we're moving into double digit uh, interest rates as central banks react to the strong dollar, the flight, capital flight uh, that is going on. Um, and we see high single digits in some developed countries. So all that is very worrying. If you talk about the importance of coordinating fiscal and monetary policy in terms of response here, um, just last week the UK government announced a series of extensive tax cuts, which is at odds with monetary policy, which is still tightening. We've heard from the IMF over the weekend warning about the risks of this policy move. The pound has plunged in the last week to record low versus the dollar. Uh, what do you, how do you think about the consequences of what's happening in the UK? Well, I think the IMF has pronounced, and there are commentators far more knowledgeable than I uh, who have commented on this issue. I mean, you know, the pound is a reserve currency, so one has to think more broadly when, when looking at fiscal and monetary policy in any of these reserve currencies. But I think we've had pronouncements, and I think I'll leave it to others to comment on it. Just from a trade perspective, a weaker pound could potentially bring more investment, more trade flows into the UK. Is that something that could come from this? Well, you have to look at uh, always when you make these policies, I think the objective that they have is growth. Um, when you, you put these policies in place, yes, there could be some parts of it that could be sensible and work. But I think you have to look at the overall impact. And if the Bank of England has to react by having to put up high interest rates, then you have to think what impact does that have on growth as well. So all of these things have to be taken into account. But I mean, I, I, I'm sure that uh, there, the, there are lots of people who have been talking uh, um, and I'm sure the Bank of England and the UK fiscal authorities are also talking together. 
Well, uh, thinking about the growth outlook, China, of course, is central from a growth perspective, and it's been a big source of the supply chain pressures that we've seen over the last few years. So far, they're sticking to their zero COVID policy. What is your expectation for when we might see that policy stance change, and, and how do you think about the outlook for China? You know, we've seen the forecast for China being downgraded again by the major uh, multilateral institutions, and that is very worrying. As you know, China has been an engine of growth for the world, and we hope that perhaps after the big political event we have in October, which is the Party Congress, perhaps there could be a relook at some of the policies to see whether there could be a way to manage the situation better and, and therefore restore China's growth path. Um, there's a, a, a lot of concern uh, at the moment around the United States' new Inflation Reduction Act. Some authorities in the EU and China and South Korea reportedly think some of the elements within this new bill are protectionist and could be in violation of WTO rules. Uh, what is your take? Are there any elements within that bill, uh, perhaps the EV um, subsidy, the EV tax credit provision that is concerning? Well, let's say that when members take measures to try to bring greenhouse gases under control, we are always encouraging of any moves that could take us towards net zero by 2050. However, of course, care has to be exercised in how it's done so as to be within WTO rules. What I think is happening now is that members are talking to each other, which we very much welcome. We don't always want to have things ending up at the WTO. So I'm, we're watching with interest how members are, who are concerned are approaching each other on these issues, and I'm hopeful they'll sort it out. We've seen examples of that happening before it comes to the WTO. And have any countries officially filed complaints with the WTO? Not that I know of. And finally, the energy crisis is front and center in Europe and in many countries around the world. Um, how do you think about incentivizing investment in Africa as a way to fill the gap that has been created by Russia? Well, first of all, um, high energy prices in Europe are very worrying. Now you see factories shutting down in Germany or producing at less than full capacity. Germany is also another engine of growth in the world. So that's worrying. We wouldn't want to see that happening because that is not good uh, for the external demand of other countries. Um, but that being said, I think it's an opportunity, and I think you know me, Julian. Every time there's a problem, I always see an opportunity in it. And of course, you know, um, we, we fossil fuels, we understand that and know a part of the problem. But we've also, it's been widely accepted that gas is a transition fuel. And certainly, the continent has a lot of gas. There's been a decrease in investment because of the push to phase out of fossil fuels completely. But I think there's now a more realistic appraisal of where we need to be with gas. And so it's an opportunity to put investment. Africa itself needs to transition. It cannot go straight into renewables completely because it doesn't have the baseload power to carry its nascent manufacturing industries. And, you know, up to 40 to 55 percent of the population does not have access to power. So this is a golden opportunity for investment in gas on the continent, for building the infrastructure needed to pipe this gas and treating it as a transition fuel. So notice the word transition, mm. um, but I think it's a good thing to do.